This episode of News Dump is sponsored by Upstart and by Masterclass. It has become Friday the 13th. Oh, God. And uh, even though we are filming it on Friday afternoon, chances are by the time you're watching this video, the date has come and gone, and it has instead become, ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. But uh, aside from the spooky, cursed vibes surrounding Friday the 13th in, in general, uh, this Friday the 13th was also hyped up for something much, much different. Because Friday the 13th 2021 was the official, certified, signed, sealed, delivered date that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were supposed to be, boom, kicked out of their positions at the White House. And President, your President, Donald Trump, was supposed to regain control of the country. Well, actually, he's had control this whole time, but now it's He's been official. in the shadows, yeah. yeah. But uh, Friday the 13th was supposed to be the day that yeah. Joe and Kamala, they got the U-Haul trucks are pulling around, they're putting their shit in, they gotta leave. Keep yucking it up, libs. You're gonna be eating crow on Friday, August 13th, when the truth comes out. And this was, of course, all according to former crack addict, current pillow salesman, and current conspiracy peddler, Mike Lindell. He's been on a bit of a bender. <laughs> we, uh, we, you know, haven't covered him in a little bit be because that's what he's been planning this epic week. Look, listen, we're going 72 straight hours. No breaks. <laughs> I might need to run off to the bathroom every couple uh, of 45 minutes or so, but... Uh, I'll play the clip uh, in a second because uh, I, I, I wasn't going to bring this up because it didn't naturally fit into the entire story. But yes, at one point, he actually like berates the crowd for wanting to get up and Oh, leave. you want lunch? No, we're staying here the full 72. I haven't eaten in days. Here you go. Magically. I think we're set up for a break, and maybe we're going to talk a little bit right when we get back there. We're going to go into... No, we're not going on a break. Put up that movie again. Run the movie. There's no breaks. We're streaming 72 hours, live streaming. So around the world, this never stops. You guys can go eat. That's fine. But I ain't eating. I'm staying up here for 72 hours before they ruin our signal. Anyway, like we said, though, by the time this video goes up, Friday the 13th will have come and gone. And according to Lindell and a handful of other con artists... <laughs> Trump should be back in his chair in the Oval Office right now, right? Mm -hmm. Well, is he? No? It was all just the ramblings of a man who's completely gone off the deep end? Okay, well, I guess we can just continue the video then. Yeah, I guess uh, that's, that makes it safe to post. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, this major fill of a prediction yeah. that was hyped up by the CEO of a pillow company has been a long time coming, and uh, Mike Lindell certainly didn't sit back and just wait for things to happen. He was extremely proactive in peddling his election fraud claims up until the very bitter end, and we've covered plenty of it. Not yeah. all of it, but a lot. But of enough it. to get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when it came down to the wire, and with the date of, you know, the eviction of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris just looming over everyone's head, Lindell he went all out. He hosted another marathon live streamed event dubbed the Cyber Symposium. <laughs> which was set to take place over the course of three days in South Dakota, where the 5G rays can't reach. And also, uh, you know, you might get a bit of a spillover from those remaining at Sturgis. Yeah. Come by. You're <laughs> hey, already you're, in the neighborhood. You're already here. Why not come by the Cyber Symposium? The event that, w you know, you tell a biker to go to a Cyber Symposium, they're like, hell yeah, yeah. let's go. Sounds like it's right up my alley. But as you could safely assume, the entire event was a mess. And spoiler alert, Lindell's predictions failed to materialize despite his insistence that he had rock solid proof of election fraud and that it was so airtight that the Supreme Court would have no choice but to overturn the results of last year's election. Because as we all know, when you have a case, you just bring a handful of files and documents up to the steps of the Supreme yeah. Court and just hand it over, and that's when business gets Hello, done. Hello, I'm calling for John Roberts, <laughs> Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. You're gonna wanna get a load of this, sir. You know that? Case you've been looking for? <laughs> hey, hey, John, look this. Hey, Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts, it's your covet cousin, Marvin Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that evidence you've been looking for? Listen, Mike it's a Back to the Future <laughs> reference for all the kids out there. Okay, this evidence, you guys aren't really that into it, but your kids are going to love your it. Kids are going to love the evidence against China. Uh, um, yeah, so he didn't produce any of this actual proof. The event was a flop. Lindell ended up digging his hole even deeper. Um, the rants that he continued to go on got crazier, more uh, unhinged, and uh, less coherent 
as the event went on. It was all. It was just a big cope. Yeah, and uh, what in what seemed like a last ditch effort to provide an excuse to just leave the stage and go into hiding and uh, not turn over any solid evidence. Oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe what happened. He blamed Antifa for not only ruining his event, here you go. These guys, I couldn't believe it. I'm going, I'm going, what? So they stick, it's called some poison pill in so that everybody's stuff would have been um, ruined so you, they take your computers or whatever it is. I didn't even understand it all. I go, what? We've had Antifa things or people that have infiltrated, they're telling me this morning and I'm going, and you know what? I would have said, no, the shows, we're gonna keep going. But he also said, while holding back tears, not doing a great job at holding them back, he was letting them flow, actually, uh, that he had been attacked by Antifa thugs outside his hotel room. Here you go. I, last night when I got to the hotel, I was attacked. And, um, but I'm gonna have, if, if, uh, you can stay up here, if Kendra come up and pray for our nation and pray for this. We look to God, we look to God, we look to Jesus. He is our help. He is our source. He is our everything, and he's got the plan. I'm, uh, I'm okay. It hurts a little bit, but they, uh, it just uh, I just want to know everyone out there, all the evil that's out there. Surely there's security footage at this Ramada Inn or whatever the fuck this is. I've called my lawyer, Jesse Smollett, and he is on the case. Anyways, in addition to that, according to uh, Zach Patrizzo, who has done fantastic work on his Lindell coverage, one of the few people willing to actually show up and just get yelled at <laughs> and like probably have his life threatened just for being there. Yeah. Um, yeah, according to him, Antifa was uh, actively trying to infiltrate the event. So he went outside to check this out for himself and confirm and catch some of these Antifa thugs on camera as they attempted to physically destroy the cyber symposium. Here's what he found. Wow. Well, all right, then. Yeah, yeah very scary stuff. This guy's basically a war journalist. Stay safe out there. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the latest update on the uh, Antifa attacks is that despite the local police department not receiving any reports of an attack, either from Lindell himself or the hotel where he was staying, officers did end up visiting him and a report has now been filed. Oh, no. Yeah. But no arrests have been made. According to the local newspaper, the Argus Leader, journalists, quote, Requested the victim's age, gender, location of residence, and injury status, which is commonly provided in other similar incidents while the investigation is taking place. But they were denied any information about the supposed attack. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, then. I mean, you would assume this day and age there would be security footage. And look, we'll eat our words. If, there, if this was an Antifa attack, look, we'll, we'll, we'll say that it, it actually happened in, you know, video proof and an investigation yeah. and all that. Big but it, if true. It also could be, you know, two things. Uh, filing a false report, which is probably the most likely, or it could be that, you know, after a long, hard day of trolling the libs, you go back to the hotel bar, everyone has a couple of drinks, you've been up for 48, 72 hours, you something like that. You bump your head on something. Look, or you, you know, you get into a, a bit of an argument with some of the locals and, uh, Things happen. Yeah. Yeah. That could also be true. That could. Now, an organized uh, attack by uh, Antifa, a bit unlikely, but anything could happen. Anything but, could happen. But yeah, back to that rock solid evidence that Lindell has been sitting on for months. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it turns out it was debunked during the symposium as well. Because uh, yeah. in an interview with conservative outlet, The Washington Times, the cyber expert Josh Merritt, who was hired by Lindell to interrogate the data, admitted that there's nothing that backs up the claim that China hacked the 2020 election. Mm. Quote, so our team said, we're not going to say that this is legitimate if we don't have confidence in the information, <laughs> Mr. Merritt said. Yeah. Uh, their reporting continues. And, and just to reiterate, this is a conservative news org who you would assume would uh, give Lindell at least the benefit of the doubt if there were even a shred of truth or evidence to support his claims. Yes. Quote, Mr. Lindell delayed a scheduled unveiling of his evidence on Wednesday at the symposium. He had offered $5 million to any in-person attendee who can disprove his claims. The offer is no longer on the table, Mr. Merritt said. Leading up to the seminar, Mr. Lindell had displayed a video of scrolling incomprehensible text, which he claimed were the packet captures he had received. Proof, he claimed, of his China hacking theory. And yeah, it, it was yeah, it was like just like the Matrix on screen. He's like, there it is. There it is. Everyone, take uh, take your camera phones and there, out. And there were multiple like cyber experts that are like, okay, can they, I actually? They want look the five at, million dollar reward. Can I see it? Because yes. right now, I mean, yeah, you, this could just be a bunch of nonsense. Can I actually look at it? 
Yeah. To analyze it? No. No, you can't. No, because then you're going to give it to the New York Times and they're going to they're going to tamper with it and they're going to be like, so look, it says China didn't. Yeah. They didn't do the thing I'm saying. Uh, their article continues, cybersecurity expert Jay Kirk Wiebe, a former senior national security a uh, agency analyst and whistleblower, also said Mr. Lindell did not have the actual data sets. He said the scrolling text was likely meant to resemble what the packet captures would look like in the data set, but were not actual packet captures, which are vital to prove the claims. Yeah. Several <laughs> cyber experts at the symposium became frustrated late into the first day with not being provided the packet captures. Mr. Merritt and Mr. Wiebe said the missing packet captures could be a result of either the format the data was sent in or they were withheld by the source of the information, a man named Dennis L. Montgomery. Mr. Montgomery is a former government contractor who developed cyber tools named Hammer and Scorecard, which were allegedly used by the U.S. to influence foreign elections. Mr. Montgomery came forward with the data after he said the tools were being used to influence U.S. elections, according to Mr. Wiebe. Mr. Merritt confirmed that Mr. Montgomery was the source of the data, but the data Mr. Montgomery sent contains no packet captures and cannot be used to validate Mr. Lindell's marquee theory, which he planned to unveil at the symposium, said the two experts. Now, unfortunately, shame. for anyone in attendance who had some questions about that data, quote, Mr. Montgomery reportedly suffered a stroke on the eve of the symposium and had not been in contact with Mr. Lindell's team or any cyber experts at the symposium. So, you that, know. What, that's some terrible luck. Terrible Tell timing. You what. Terrible timing. Wow. Oh, I can't make it. I had a stroke. Which, look. Could have been the deep state. You never want to wish harm on anyone. I uh, hope this guy recovers from his oddly timed stroke. They pulled out the, the Cuba s syndrome gun. And they yeah, gave they us... pulled that gun that gives yeah. you the vibes. They gave him the vibes. <laughs> we, gave, we gave him the vibes. Oh, my God. Suddenly my vibes are fucked. <laughs> I got fucked vibes. I can't go. <laughs> uh, anyways. So something that also uh, just so happened to have taken place right in the midst of Mike Lindell's 72 hours symposathon, mm -hmm. which may or may not have caused him to exit the stage in a hurry without saying anything, was that it was announced that a federal judge denied requests to have the lawsuits filed by Dominion thrown out and uh, that Lindell, along with Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, would still or could still be on the hook for a billion dollars each for their claims that Dominion voting systems were responsible for stealing the 2020 election. Yeah, you find out, you get a little text on your phone during your cyber symposium. Yeah, you're like, still being sued. <laughs> for a billion dollars. Hmm. So uh, here's the Washington Post. In a written opinion, U.S. District Judge Carl J. Nichols said Dominion has adequately alleged that Powell and Lindell made their claims knowing that they were false or with reckless disregard for the truth. Yeah, I mean, this looks like total bullshit. Ooh. A reasonable juror could conclude that Powell did not have a video of Dominion's founder saying that, quote, he can change a million votes, no problem at all, as she had claimed, the judge wrote. <laughs> Nichols also wrote that a sensible juror could conclude that Lindell's insistence on, quote, the existence of a vast international conspiracy that is ignored by the government but proven by a spreadsheet on an internet blog is so inherently improbable that only a reckless man would believe it. Referencing Lindell's assertion that a spreadsheet he shared on Twitter as proof of Trump's victory was evidence. Um, not really good when a judge uh, presiding over this is calling what you uh, are releasing reckless. Well, uh, who appointed that judge? The Joe deep Biden? State. George it, Soros. Is that, a, is that one of those Biden judges? Yes. Conflict of interest, Your Honor. Uh, in addition to these lawsuits, it was also announced, uh, quote, on Tuesday, Dominion filed separate defamation lawsuits against Newsmax, One American News, their executives, and Patrick Byrne, the former CEO of Overstock.com. Mm, I can only get so hard. Uh, Come Dominion, on. <laughs> Dominion alleges that the networks boosted false allegations about the company in an attempt to help their own bottom lines. Uh, and they had, like, tiptoed around things for a while because they were like, Mm, I don't know, we might get sued over this. Yeah. And then they, uh, I mean, the, first of all, the damage had already been done. Yeah. And then went, uh, under the guise that they, they probably, at this point, they would have announced us uh, getting sued a while if ago, If we right? were getting sued, we'd have heard about that. Uh, also, ago. Dominion clearly points to the fact that, uh, the, the, I think it was One American News, just despite the warnings that they put on them, ran Mike Lindell's conspiracy documentaries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, as always, we will continue to watch as this all plays out. There, I mean, there just hasn't been a lot to talk about with Mike Lindell until this week when he laid all his cards on the table only to face defeat and a billion-dollar lawsuit and a prediction that didn't come true and many, many tears shed at the hands 
of those Antifa thugs. Mm -hmm. He was like, actually, this is Pepe the Frog. He's kind of a representative for Boom! <laughs> It's a deep cut. Uh, uh, so if you want an incredible recap of the event, which includes an exclusive interview with Lindell himself in his most lucid possible uh, form. Yeah, like caught him off stage. Hey, uh, uh, you, you mind answering some questions? You should check out uh, Donnie O'Sullivan, the, the only good CNN employee, Donnie <laughs> O'Sullivan, his coverage of the event. We'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, here's a little taste. Yeah. If you have that evidence. No. Why, just forget about the evidence. If I'm right that China took our country right now, do you care? Would that bother you? Would, you, you Would that bother you? But you have to show the proof for it, no, right? No, Donnie, I know they're paying you well, but you should just go start your own all gas, no breaks YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, this was brilliant work. Because, yeah, no, he's he's the guy CNN sends to all the fucking nut job events. Yeah. And he does a tremendous job, like, keeping his cool, asking these people the right questions. Yeah, he doesn't, and get, staying he doesn't get flustered. There's a point where Mike Lindell just keeps rattling off and he's like, okay, but where's the proof? And like, that's a, a lot of, uh, at least people on major news networks never follow up the questions they initially ask. But with, Mr. But Lindell, where's the, where's the proof? Yeah. Well, I can't get mad at this little Irishman. No, they, like typically when people have interviews with, uh, I, 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 Mike Lindell's pretty low on the totem pole when it comes to like political people. Yeah. But like in general, you see interviews and it's like, they'll ask a question, Whoever they're talking to will put a huge spin on it, yeah. and then we'll move on to the next question without uh, re-asking the question or being yeah. like you'd completely avoided the question. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's journalism. O'Sullivan there. was just like, "Do you have anything to back up what you've just said?" Well, no, because then the media is gonna twist it. <laughs> you guys in the media, you take everything I say. Why is it anybody listening to me? It's right there. You keep taking what I say at face value. <laughs> uh, also, uh, just for fun, yeah. uh, here's the massive, gargantuan crowd that was in attendance for Lindell's Cyber Symposium. So, hmm, I mean, at the very least, it won't get targeted for being a super spreader event. Yes, yeah, so he has that going for him. Um, Clearly, this man did not spread the coronavirus through his symposium. Yeah. The the whitest and oldest crowd I think I've ever seen. The, the, the crowd was at its biggest on the first day when people in the audience thought for a moment that they might be able to get $5 million out of this guy. Yeah. 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 Anyways, we do have some more typical news stories uh, for News Dump for you this week. But before we get into that, uh, let's quickly thank today's sponsors, starting with Upstart. When it comes to paying off debt, it can often feel like an uphill battle. High interest rates resulting in minimum monthly payments keep you in an endless cycle of debt. Upstart can help you get ahead. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score, like your income and employment history. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash newsdump. That is upstart.com slash news dump. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash news dump. And this episode is also sponsored by Masterclass. Masterclass gives you the extra knowledge and motivation that you need to take your craft, whatever it may be, to the next level. Yeah, that's where Masterclass shines because you're getting information from literally the best people in the business from a variety of fields like cooking, Music, film, animation, business, tech, pillow sales, and plenty more. With Masterclass, <laughs> you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn the art of DJing and music curation from Questlove. You can improve your cooking skills from Gordon Ramsay. Or you can learn game design and theory from Will Wright. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing that you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. Yeah, and it's great. Everyone thinks Gordon Ramsay's going to yell at you. No. He's going to caress you with no, love. No, Gordon Ramsay wants you to learn. He's yes. actually quite nice and quite It is helpful. in Gordon Ramsay's best interest for you to be a better cook. He has a wealth of information, and you will uh, you will absolutely learn a thing or two. The safer him. you are with a knife, the better <laughs> it is for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Elliot's been taking some classes on the old guitar. Yeah, Tom Morello. Great yeah. great guitar class there. It really makes you makes you think outside of the box and get creative. You unplug it and start tapping the strings. Yeah. It makes a different noise. Yeah, so the thing I learned is uh, just do some extremely weird shit and yeah. uh, it creates some pretty cool sounds. <laughs> anyway, these cinema quality classes give you unparalleled access to literal experts and the lessons range from showing you how to execute a technique to insights about that craft. You can explore lessons in any order across your phone, tablet, Apple TV, or computer and at just 
10 to 15 minutes, you can squeeze a few lessons in here or there without setting aside an entire day. If you're interested, we definitely think that you should check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And for our viewers, you get 15% off an annual membership. Just go to masterclass.com slash news dump. That is masterclass.com slash news dump for 15% off Masterclass. Links are always down below in the description. All right, uh, back into the news now with a whole lot of updates from stories we've been covering over the past few weeks. And uh, then we'll end it with a not so thinly veiled threat from a very loud, angry guy who rescues bars. <sighs> uh, first up, it, it, it's been confirmed. The dudes from South Park now own Casa Bonita. Casa Bonita, Casa Bonita. Which is, of course, the theme restaurant in Denver, Colorado that was featured on an episode of the series. And like also 20 years ago. And also it, it's in, uh, I think it's Stick of Truth is the game that it's in. Yeah, but uh, it's a real place. Yeah, it is a real place, and they do have cliff divers. And uh, the guys from South Park now own it. Yeah, they've, uh -huh. they were, they've fallen in some hard times recently. And thankfully, Trey and Matt, were they were there to... Scoop things Seize up. the opportunity. <laughs> uh, in, in case you haven't been following the South Park news, uh, real brief, Trey Parker, Matt Stone, they recently struck a deal with Viacom and Paramount to the tune of just under a billion dollars. And the end result is a hell of a lot more episodes of South Park, 14 movies, and apparently some money left over for fun stuff like buying Casa Bonita and also launching their own brand of weed, which is also inspired by the series Tegrity Farms. Now, we'll get back to the weed brand and some hints at the projects that they're working on with all that cash. But here's the latest on that acquisition of Casa Bonita from The Hollywood Reporter. Trey Parker and Matt Stone are the proud owners of Casa Bonita, the beloved Colorado restaurant featured in South Park. The duo, who grew up in Colorado, were interviewed on Friday by Governor Jared Police, where they broke the news. Afterwards, Parker told The Hollywood Reporter the deal had closed that morning. Quote, we bought it, he told the THR. It just feels natural. Financial details were not disclosed, but Parker called the final price tag fair. Yeah, I feel like they would type of people that would be fair to the previous owners to be like, look, we're not stealing this from you mm -hmm. because you're desperate, but we're going to get it at a good price. Yeah. Uh, back to the other projects, though. Uh, in a recent interview with Bloomberg, Matt Stone gave up some more information about what, what else they're up to. And it uh, looks like uh, good news if you were a fan of their recent YouTube series, Sassy Justice. Because they're going to be focusing a lot on deep fake technology, among other things. Oh, good. Yeah. Quote, we're doing deep fakes. We have a studio with a dozen people who are deep fake artists. We're working on a little more of this deep fake movie we're trying to oh piece together. Which. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Good. That's going to be an interesting potential court case of using uh, celebrities yeah. in a movie they had uh, no business being in or signed off on. That will be interesting. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, it would have to fall under parody, which seems like it would be easy for them to do. But also, the technology is so good that it looks is, like these people are actually in the movie. Yeah, this is uh, this is new ground. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't it. seen Sassy Justice and you want to, just a taste of how good their artists they are. They did a great job. Uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, it, it almost feels like they're like, look, these deep uh, fake artists, they're up to no good. we got to save them and put them yeah, on something Give noble. them jobs. So they, it's like with hackers. <laughs> give, yeah. give them a good job. These so are white hat uh, deep fake artists. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the movies, though, it looks like those 14 movies, they will include at least some South Park movies. Oh, baby. We have this idea where the first ones for Paramount Plus are South Park, but not quite. We have a high concept idea for the first one to set it apart. But right after that, we go back and do a six-episode run for Comedy Central on HBO Max, probably at the end of this year or early next year, the classic kind. But uh, there are ideas for other movies, quote, a horror movie, a musical, and then the quote about making Tegrity Weed a reality. I think we're really, for the first time, going to bring Tegrity Weed into real life. Man, this is like the weed version of Szechuan sauce. Uh, yeah, it's it, this should be the easiest of all of the projects because it's like if Steve Urkel can have his own weed brand yeah. and pretty much anyone else who wants it can have their own weed brand, it's just... I'm not, I'm not going to say the weed business is easy money, but... If you've it's got, probably pretty hard to like lose money. On. Yeah, if you've got a bit like a yeah. uh, a a hook for the weed, it's gonna be much easier to sell. Yeah. Um, but you would hope with a name like Tegrity, yeah. that it would uh, pass a lot. These of, other uh, brands lack tests. Tegrity. Um, Anyways, on the other side of the entertainment world, Britney Spears, the Free Britney movement, has won. Yeah. It looks like Britney Spears' father, Jamie, will be stepping down from his position as her conservator which in theory would allow Britney the freedom that she's been seeking for more than a decade since she was initially put in this position. Yeah. Uh, in the legal documents obtained by TMZ, the lawyer representing Jamie Spears said the following. 
There are, in fact, no actual grounds for suspending or removing Mr. Spears as the conservator of the estate, and it is highly debatable whether a change in conservator at this time would be in Ms. Spears' best interest. Uh, nevertheless, even as Mr. Spears is the unremitting target of unjustified attacks, he does not believe that a public battle with his daughter over his continuing service as her conservator would be in her best interest. So even though he must contest this unjustified petition for his removal, Mr. Spears intends to work with the court and his daughter's new attorney to prepare for an orderly transition to a new conservator. Okay, so what happens next? We have no idea. Nope. Uh, looks like Brittany's lawyers, and she recently, she switched lawyers, and that seems to have really uh, worked out for her. But uh, her lawyers will keep fighting with her dad over her finances and how they were handled over the last 13 years. But in the meantime, everyone just kind of gets to see how it all plays out in real time as far as Brittany having more control over her life. Are we going to regret it? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Hopefully like, it's for the better. Sh by all, you know, measure, she seems like an adult who can handle herself. It would be, it would be absolutely tragic, but slightly funny if like a week from now she shaves her head and is hitting paparazzis with an umbrella again. It would be horrible, but it would also be like for everyone that was clamoring the entire time just the biggest waste of time ever. It would be like if the Snyder Cut sucked. Yeah. She did, uh, a couple weeks back, she got her first iPad. She was apparently, she, she was, was posting yeah. about it. She's like, this is amazing. That, so that's a, the, the kind of stuff where I'm just like, this is yeah, actually, this is actually kind of unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Like, at what point was her dad like, you can't have a fucking iPad? But I guess, yeah. I mean, whatever. Well, she has to like run all of her purchases through him. And it's, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's someone from bringing someone back from 2007. Mm -hmm. it, I would love to show her the Stanley Nichols video and see, <laughs> see what she thinks of it. What the fuck is cryptocurrency? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like within a week, she's gonna like have her own cryptocurrency. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's not like her life isn't gonna be under a microscope at this point moving forward either. So, I mean, she seems like a a homebody. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that'll change. But th that could also be <laughs> against her will. Who knows? Yeah. I don't, yeah. Uh, I guess we'll yeah. see. We are all unwilling participants in this <laughs> experiment. Did you see, like, her son, who's, like, 16 or some shit yeah. now, he, like, a, a little while back, <laughs> he got in a little bit of trouble because he was on, like, TikTok or somewhere just being like, I hope my grandpa fucking dies. And Jesus just, like, Christ! Yeah, <laughs> writing shit like that. This is fucking, uh, 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 what's their family's name all over again? I'm so glad I can't remember their name. I don't know. The, the, with the mom in the White House and the dad running the anti-conservative. Oh, the Conways. Conservative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope she's doing okay, the little one. Well, Anyways, yeah. um, yeah. Hey, now hey. for an update on Jake Paul. Oh, good. Yeah, it looks like that, uh, FBI raid on his house last year has resulted in a whole lot of nothing. And he won't be facing any federal charges as a result of that raid. From The Verge, the U.S. attorney won't be filing any charges against Jake Paul, according to TMZ, and a statement sent to The Verge by Paul's lawyers. Paul was being investigated by the FBI, who raided his house, for his involvement in an incident that took place at an Arizona mall in May 2020. These particular legal troubles began when Paul was filmed in and around a mall in Scottsdale, Arizona, which was being looted in the wake of police brutality protests sparked by the murder of George Floyd. Paul denied participating in the looting and wasn't seen doing so in the videos that circulated on social media, but was still charged with criminal trespassing and unlawful assembly by the Scottsdale Police Department. According to the police, the charges against Paul were then dropped to allow the FBI to carry out a federal criminal investigation. At the time, the FBI confirmed that it did carry out federal search warrants in California related to the investigation, but would not comment on what they were looking for or what was found. Now it seems that the investigation is over. Ladies and gentlemen, we didn't get him. We didn't get him. But it was also weird because there was a lot of, at the time, stuff going on about like his day-to-day -day manager being involved with some kind of criminal operation. Yeah, yeah. So this is strange, but hey, look, it's the, hey, the investigation is over. Put a pin in it. For now. This chapter has come to a close. Anyways, over in somehow slightly related jackass news, you'll see in a minute. Yeah. The next film in the series is still scheduled for release in October, and the behind-the-scenes drama relating to Bam Margera is still very messy. Yeah. Uh, this week it was announced that Margera was suing pretty much everyone involved in the production over what he claims is discrimination due to a mental health disability. Jesus Christ. Oh, boys. From The Hollywood Reporter, According to a complaint filed by Brandon Bam Margera on Monday in Los Angeles Superior Court, producers violated his civil rights when they forced him to sign a wellness agreement and then cut him loose after a positive drug test. Margera says he suffers from physical and mental disabilities 
and that his termination amounts to illegal discrimination. In his suit against Paramount Pictures, MTV Networks, Jeff Tremaine, Johnny Knoxville, Spike Jones, and other associated entities, Margera says he's been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and attention deficit disorder. He also admits to a history of abusing alcohol. He says he's been in and out of rehab since 2009. So the article continues. The wellness agreement, as it's being referred to here, allowed for his immediate termination in the event he didn't blow into a breathalyzer three times a day, submit to a urinalysis twice a week, and have his hair follicles tested on a regular basis, and take pills every morning while on a FaceTime call with a doctor hired by Paramount. The suit, with references to Britney Spears' conservatorship, calls this agreement draconian and psychological torture, plus legally unenforceable. So, it goes on to say that he was fired according to this lawsuit after testing positive for Adderall, which he'd been prescribed for his ADD, although that differs heavily from what was being reported at the time, and it also doesn't help that Bam spent the weeks following his removal posting videos to his Instagram, where he's essentially incoherent. Real fucked up. And, yeah, drinking heavily and allegedly, though pretty clearly in some videos that were deleted, on drugs that weren't Adderall, mm -hmm. Um, allegedly, according to videos that were deleted, you've seen them. Uh, as we said before, it is very clear that Bam has serious problems. And especially for me, who grew up watching this guy, very sad to see him constantly struggling with these issues. But it's also, he's a clear liability on a film set. Yeah. And this is a huge production by a huge company. A dangerous production. Uh, yeah. So. And he is, from the start, everyone from the start is a liability. But when you are not a person who is sober, uh, a bigger liability. Yeah. Um, this is just from an outsider's perspective, but it doesn't seem like this lawsuit will go in his favor. No. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we just like everyone else want Bam to get the help he needs and stay clean. Because look, I was following him for the longest time. His Instagram for the, the months leading up to him being kicked off the film were actually pretty inspiring. The yeah, dude he, was sober. He, he was skating like, every day. Yeah. He seemed to be doing well with his family. And then after that, it was a real dark couple of months on his social media. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Tremaine had to take a restraining order out. That on was actually was sending him to fulfilled. Death yeah. yeah. So I'm sure that'll come up in this whole thing. Like, he's suing over this. And in the meantime, the producers of the movie had to get restraining orders because he was an imminent threat to him yeah. and their family. I don't think it's going to work out for him. Yeah. Anyway, before we leave you with the, the bar rescue guy saying the quiet part out loud, let's talk about Nicolas Cage real quick. Uh, do, have you seen Pig yet? No. Where is it playing? Uh, you can now get it on VOD. Okay. So I rented it on VOD. It is so good. It. I mean, there's comparisons that people made to John Wick. I don't think those comparisons are that valid. It is just a straight up good movie. Mm -hmm. Real, like, slow burn, high intensity movie where Nicolas Cage, tour de force, amazing he just gets to act his ass off it's yeah. incredible there's specifically one scene in a restaurant so i won't spoil it it's just a scene in a restaurant that i literally after the movie was over had to go back and watch again because it was that fucking good okay i ended up watching the movie again in its entirety the next day great great movie i can't anything i say wouldn't really spoil it anyway because it's all about the acting in this film it's great it's great um so there you go definitely rent pig if you're into dark indie movies specifically I've, yeah i've only heard good things Anyway, Nicolas Cage, obviously a workhorse. He's somehow found his way into every batshit movie that exists. Uh, because this next one, which is coming out in just over a month, uh, that's according to Cage himself, the wildest movie I've ever made. Which is saying a lot. Uh, so this one's called Prisoners of the Ghost Land. The movie is set in a place called Samurai Town, where Cage is a bank robber imprisoned after a job goes horribly wrong. However, when the granddaughters of the town's warlord go missing, the warlord offers the robber a deal. Put on this explosive suit and head into the wastelands and retrieve her, or else. He does, of course, and what he finds is not at all what anyone is expecting. That sounds fucking wild. Yeah, I mean, it sounds... I, I saw some reviews of Samurai it... Samurai Town. ...that say, like, it takes... It, it, it borrows lovingly from pretty much every John Carpenter movie. Great. Because it sounds like Escape from New York. Yeah, yeah. So, but with Nicolas Cage in a modern uh, setting called Samurai Town. And you better bet that those semi-trucks with all the LEDs all over them make an appearance in this movie. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. They got it. Can't drive those here. <laughs> Over in Japan, where they have freedom, you can put as many annoying LED lights on your giant big rig truck as you want. Yeah. Cops can't do shit. There you go. Anyway, that's going to be on VOD on September 17th. 
full trailer down in the description. So that'll be three insane performances from Nick Cage in this also stunted year by coronavirus. What was the first one? Uh, the Basically, Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I think it's like Willie's oh, I forgot Wonderland. about that. I, I haven't seen it yet, and I need to because and when I brought that up on our Discord, everyone's like, oh, it's so good, you have to see it. Wait, so that's really? next on the list. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyways, finally today, John Taffer, host of Bar Rescue. You're right? going to kill somebody. We, we make fun of him a lot. I loved the show. We had, a, we had a very close friend that worked on the show for a very long time. It's a very entertaining show, mm-hmm. but he's also very abrasive. Yeah. And I have actually been to bars that he's rescued, and I'd say generally... The success rate is like less than 50%. Yeah, one that I went to, you could, clear, you could clearly tell that like wherever the camera was pointed, yeah. they, they you know put some money into that. I went to the bathroom at that place, and I think I've told this story before, but the urinal in that bathroom of a bar that was rescued was literally uh, a bunch of wood hammered together with, uh, like, epoxy on the bottom to, like, seal it and make it waterproof. Yeah, that's not going to rot. Yeah, Look. so that's that was the toilet in a bar that was rescued uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, but, yeah, John Taffer, if you're unfamiliar, he goes to bars. Shut it down! He busts open the books, and he... Figures out a way to rescue them. You gotta clean these nozzles. He's gonna have a great career when the coronavirus is over because there's a lot of bars that need rescue. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that guy was on Laura Ingram's show on Fox News recently where he commented on the, the staffing crisis that's... Staffing crisis. Yeah, that's unfolding across the country where if you believe one side of the story, it's because uh, everyone's getting money from the government to stay home because, uh, well, of the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Uh, or the other side, which is you know, pretty believable that people don't want to come back and work at places where they're getting yelled at all day yeah. by customers who don't want to wear masks for minimum wage, which at this point still is not a livable wage. Yeah. And even what they were uh, going to bump it up to is no longer a minimum wage. Yeah. I made a joke two or three years ago on Twitter that was like, minimum wage should be $30. Yeah. And even at the time, it wasn't really that much. It was kind of a wink and a nod joke. Like, this is well, kind of like, yeah, by the but, time 15 actually hits federal, it's going to be like 10 years late. Yeah, so yeah. 15 is not even enough. But anyways, obviously, you're all aware of that happening right now. But in the clip, Ingram asks him, what if we just cut off the unemployment? Hunger is a pretty powerful thing, which is her statement alone is fucked up in its own right, uh, because she's basically she just says it right there. I mean, she's let's starve people until yeah. they have to work to survive. But uh, he, he takes things even further. Uh, here's the clip. Oh, I have cool. a friend in the military who trains military dogs, Laura, and they only feed a military dog at night because a hungry dog is an obedient dog. Well, if we're not causing people to be hungry to work, that, then we're providing them with all the meals they need sitting at home. A hungry dog is an obedient dog. That's what that's what they think. The yeah. People who literally just want to earn enough to put a roof over their heads and food on the table. And, and not die. And be able to afford a doctor if need be. Yeah, and not get sick and die. restaurants and bars not giving you health insurance. So, yeah, uh, John Taffer, uh, he did end up apologizing after the clip went yeah. viral. He said, regarding an interview I did yesterday, I want to sincerely apologize for using a terrible analogy in reference to the unemployment situation. That was not my intention, and I greatly regret it. My comment was an unfortunate attempt to express a desire for our lives to return to normal. I recognize this has been a challenging year for everyone, and I'm eager for the hospitality industry to come back stronger than ever. Hmm. Okay, buddy. Yeah. You seemed pretty confident in your well-rehearsed answer there. And also, fuck Laura Ingram, because she sucks in general. But she also lobbed the question to him and added that we should threaten people with starvation to get them working again. You fucking ghouls. Just gross people all around. Yeah. They're, they're uh, like, yeah. The bumpers are off. They're saying all of the quiet parts out loud. Yeah, these people, they've always hated po- the poor, the yeah. working class. And they're now like, they find it disrespectful that they would dare yeah. not go back to work. They think that businesses are literally entitled to labor. And yeah. you're seeing supply and demand from the other side now. And I'm sorry, but you're uh, going to have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Uh, gentle reminder to uh, if you do go out to restaurants at this current moment in time, um, please be, A, nice to the people that are helping you with your service, uh, tip them well if you can afford to, and also give them a break if uh, it seems like they're irritated or having a bad day. Yeah. Because, believe me, they're fucking dealing with it. They don't want to be there. <laughs> they don't want to be the, be there. They wish they were making more, and they've probably dealt with a bunch of fucking assholes all day. So yeah. even if you're nice, they're probably at their wits end, and they just want to go home and feed their kids. Yeah. 
Anyways, uh, if you want to, if you if, look, we kind of ended on a bummer. But if you want to really, really double up bum on that bummer, yeah. uh, go check out our most recent episode of Tech Newsday, where we talk about the latest uh, climate change report. Uh, and if you want to laugh some of this off at uh, just some ridiculous shit that happened earlier in the week, go watch our video about dingers. Dinger! <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye.